Yo, what's up, guys, and welcome to Love and Second Base. What I know about this game is that we're going to get two new roommates, and we are a geek guy. That's it. Choose your character. So we should uh, choose Mike because the girl is still being developed. And of course, with the guy, we get to see more girls, right? <laughs> I love this music already, Jesus. My name is Life Wrecker because I wreck uh, lives. My last name is uh, 12 inches. Come on, what do you expect from me? What is your birthday? Why does this matter? Okay, it's 18th. It doesn't tell me which month. When do you want the game to start? Why does it matter either way? I mean, spring? One? Mate, I don't know. I, Life Wrecker. Please allow me to introduce myself. I am an intro first, demon lord of lust, duke of debauchery. I am one of the seven lords of sin. And honestly, I'm the only one that is any fun. I think this is the name of the creator of, of the game. I'm not sure. Though. Just kidding, I'm the death for that little game you are playing, that's all. This is Bree, she's a girl, cute and sexy. Your goal is to charm her or another being of her species. What do you mean, I'm not of the same species as her? My eyes hurt, I've been staring at this computer screen for what feels like an eternity by now, mindlessly tapping away at my keyboard. Words fill the sheet in front of me, more than I needed or was expecting to write. Am I a writer or something? In my mindless trace, I barely completed the sound of footsteps behind me, approaching with haste. Oh, well, that's voice acting in this game, but I could barely hear her. Your shift's silver. what are you still doing here? The sound of my boss's voice snapped me from my screen. <gasps> I turned to meet her gaze, rather than disappointed or angry, she simply seems curious. I wish I had bosses like this. I'm an unfortunate guy. Working boss. Oh, so you talk for me, thank you. I've never been a particularly hard worker. I did what was asked for of me and then moved on, but today was different. I looked back to the screen quickly, attempting to hide in my work yet again. Day's over. Go home. I'm not having some workers' union on my ass for unpaid overtime. You don't want to pay me more, why? Are you poor? I groan. <sighs> Aleta has always been a good boss, fair and understanding. She runs the place with an iron fist, but doesn't mistreat her employees. I get the impression she genuinely cares for us. Whatever you say, boss. Oh, there's a Pikachu at the door. That's cool. With an exaggerated whirling of her eyes, uh, Aleta turned and began back towards her office. I spent a moment admiring her behind as she does so, tightly wrapped in her dress. She's your boss, chill. Reluctantly, I hit safe and closed down my computer. I gazed into the empty black void of the screen for a few moments before sliding from my desk, grabbing my jacket and beginning towards the door. Wait. Whoa, 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 don't grab those like that. You, you scared me. Maybe they're heavy, who knows. I'm stopped in my tracks by my co-worker, Audrey, slipping in front of me, clasping onto my shirt with a bleeding look in her eyes. Audrey's nice, but she's trouble. She's always getting into all sorts of mess and expects me to help her clean it up. I don't know why Aleta doesn't fire her already, to be honest. She clearly doesn't find Audrey's uselessness endearing. Although Audrey has been working more nights lately, maybe she's doing other types of work, if you know what I mean. Probably not. Maybe Alat is trying to punish her in some way. Whatever, he isn't any of my business. Sorry, Audrey. I have to go. Yeah, bye. Come on. I'll make it worth your time. <clears throat> I'm sorry. That was another thing about Audrey. She had the nasty habit of flirting excessively with any male co-worker. From what I know, she's never landed. Oh, that's a surprise. In my world, I think that maybe someone will grab her. Bye, Audrey. Oh my god, I couldn't get up. <laughs> okay. I quickly pried the woman from my arm, running to the exit post haste before they could stop me. I'll never forget this! Okay, I understand why, because of her personality, right? I trudge out onto the street, the bitter cold hitting me like a brick hole as I pause to get my bearings. I'm lucky my house is nearby to work, it means I can walk to and from in no time at all. Today though, that feels like more of a curse than a blessing. It started with the call at lunch. Oh! Hey Samantha. So they want me to work extra hours without paying me hey we moved out wait you what we moved out my roommates how dare you brian asked me and whisked me away it was so romantic what about me what about your things ryan already packed and we put out an ad on your behalf for a new roommate you have to give me two weeks notice right you cannot just leave like like that whoa just hold on a minute Put on Ryan, Samantha. I could hear a few seconds of silence and distant murmuring through my phone before. So, what the hell are you doing, man? I can't afford rent on my own. Yeah, I'm poor. I work a shitty job, you know? Whoa, calm down. Samantha just told you we're already looking for a replacement. Glad that I know there's going to be two girls. Mm. That's not the point. You didn't think to warn me? You don't understand spontaneity, do you? No wonder Samantha chose me. 
Um, I'm sorry, what? Whoa. Low blow, Ryan. Whatever, dude. Later. Wait! Now I want to know how Samantha, how does she look, you know? Ryan was my old college friend. We were pretty close for a while, so rented a house together after graduating. When the landlord increased our rent, we had to look for a third roommate and found Samantha. Both of us were clearly interested from the start, and it quickly turned into a contest. Ryan won. It turned into a real touch after that, and would rub his victory in my face at every possible moment. Samantha didn't seem to even notice. I was still reeling from being dumped by my girlfriend, Alexis, at the time, so it really hurt. If I had a girlfriend, why would I would want to be with Samantha. You stupid mate. Oh my god, guys are so such an asshole. I caught her sneaking around baking strangers behind my back. It was rough for a while. They were rough with the weather as well. Now, all I've got waiting for me is a large empty place I can't afford to live in. I'd rather be working all night. Um, who's this? Oh, that's a female version of our character. A strange woman stands outside my door, hammering the doorbell even though it was clear nobody's home. She seems annoyed, as though the occupant of the home she was trying to enter has wronged her somehow. Can I help you? She turns to me as I speak and I have to admit, I was struck by her beauty. Oh hey, you know who lives here? I'm supposed to meet them, but I don't think they're in. Uh, mate, I'm here. <laughs> who do you think lives here if I'm at the door? There was one likelihood that stood out above all others in my mind. She must have arranged to meet me here with Ryan. He knew what time I get home from work, so probably told her to wait for me then. I feel a slight twinge of guilt as I realize that my moping around made her stand around in the cold for god knows how long. Oh, it's me. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. You here for the place? I don't question how quickly she responded to the advertisement, right? I just got a call from the guys that were leaving my house and they just posted an ad and then this girl just appears five minutes later. What the hell? Oh yeah, I'm Bree. I take it you're my potential roommate? Yeah, sure, why not? She doesn't seem all that mad for making her wait at least and quickly took my outstretched hand to give a quick shake. I'm given pause by how soft her skin is, but I shake it off. I don't want another Samantha here, even if she's really hot. Yeah, that's me. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Come on in. I'll show you around. Wow, this place is pretty nice. Take her into the basement and show her the dungeon. I nod, it's even got a communal pool for the price I'm lucky and well, now she's too. When can I move in? Right now. My bed is available. <laughs> Whoa, hold on a minute. Move in? I've known you for less than a minute. Why the guy sound so upset? Shouldn't we like ask questions and get to know each other first? Oh, do you know that I'm not a pervert, you know? Oh, okay. In that case, tell me about yourself. Well, that's kind of vague. I'm a guy. I was born one day and I'm here. Then do you like sports? No. Martial arts, golf, discreet cooking, dancing, shooting. No, I don't. I mean, I like martial arts. I do martial arts. I don't do them, but uh, I wouldn't say no. Oh, cool. You have to show me some moves sometime. Yeah, look at my moves! My martial arts. So, I'll go get my things. Wait, did you bring your things already? Hold on a minute, that was one question. I don't trust this girl, no, 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 no. She wants to be in my house way too quickly. And now we know each other better. Great, which room is mine? But I don't have a choice, they're going to call through the door before answering. And that's the other girl, right? Hello? I'll guess that she's a goth girl, right? Hey, I'm here for the roommate position. I never heard about that position. <laughs> the position where I say in my room and you say in yours. Another just what was in that hat to attract them so quickly? Yeah, come in. I step away from the door, waiting for the stranger to enter as Bree seems to grow curious. Is that our new roommate? Maybe it's my new roommate, I, I don't know if it's gonna be yours as well. I sigh. It's clear arguing with her is futile, and it isn't like I've got much choice. Rent is just around the corner, and I don't have uh, nearly enough to live here on my own. I give a silent nod, which clearly excites Bree. She gives the air a quick fist bump when she thinks I'm not looking. Oh, she's uh, like this. The girl on the other side must have been hesitating, because it took a moment for the door to the room open. Another a stunning girl stands at the entrance, although her demeanor is much darker than Breeze already. I got the right place. Yeah, you did. But they're the completely opposites, aren't they? Why she waited to ask until after she'd opened the door was beyond me. Yeah, nice to meet you. And I'm Bree. Are you gonna be moving in too? The ad said three bedrooms, so yeah. These girls need to chill out, mate. I push aside that nagging in the back of my mind, annoyed that they seem to have decided they're living here without even asking. It's true that the place is technically three bedrooms, but me and Ryan made one of the rooms into a gym when him and Samantha hooked, hooked up. She was sleeping with him after all, no need to leave a room to waste. You two can move into my bed with me, and the other rooms we can do whatever we want, you know?
a dungeon maybe. That reminds me though, all of that equipment was Ryan's. It's probably all gone now. I groaned quietly to myself at the realization that I'll have to start paying for the gym too. Ugh, if it's such a big deal, I'll find somewhere else. Jeez, chill! Seeming to misunderstand my groan as being directed towards her, the new girl turned and began to head back towards the door. I reached out quickly to grasp her arm to stop her in their tracks. Wait! Not going anywhere, wait a minute! I find myself cowering, however, as she slowly turned her head to meet me. Her gaze was terrifying, I could have thrown it alone, could have driven me to the verge of death. I wordlessly slowly released her, extending my arms in an apologetic manner as I backed away. I, I mean, I wasn't groaning at you. Yeah, sorry about that, sorry, sorry. Touch me again like that and I'll end you. Okay, okay. Jeez, what was with this girl? Yeah, okay. No touching, got it. She has a huge forehead though. I'm glad Bree finds this whole situation funny. I can see her holding back laughter from out of the corner of my vision. Good, then we've reached an understanding. I'm Sasha. You can call me Sasha. Hello Sasha, what do you do for a living? And I thought I could uh, choose their names as well, I guess not. Nice to meet you Sasha. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense because they actually talk in this game. Yeah, likewise. Nice was an overstatement, but being rude would be dangerous with a girl like that. Alright, anything else you need for me? Money, I need money. There are so many questions, I don't know where to begin, so I'll simply start with what seems obvious. I'll need your current job for the leasing contract. I'm a student full time. How do you get money then? That gives me a slight pause, but I make a mental note of it anyway. I wonder how a student can afford to stay in a place like this, even with three people and good price for the size, it isn't cheap. Before you ask, I work at a clothing store at the mall. Oh, can you bring uh, clothes for me for free? I can imagine now, classic architecture and only black clothes. The staff will be pretentious and all have names like winter. Everything will be expensive to make up for the fact that nobody but gods care about it, so sales are uh, low. But hey, I don't care how she makes her money as long as I don't have to cover her ass with brands. True. What do you do? I work as a code monkey in a local company. And I still don't have enough money to have a place of my own. Perfect. That doesn't sound like the most inspiring job. That's because it isn't. Then how do you unwind? <laughs> Sorry, what kind of questions are those? Theater games, fitness, partying, working cars, reading, playing guitar. I mean, for me, let's go with video games because fitness, I mean, I work out a little bit. Partying, I don't like to party. Working, I mean, I work, right? Cars, I don't really care about cars. Reading, I read on Reddit. Playing guitar, I don't know how. But let's go video games. I play a lot of video games. Oh, nice. I should have made you for a fellow gamer. You both play video games. You're gonna judge me now? Apparently. Do you? No thanks, I have grown up hobbies. Do you wanna sit down for a bit, please? Like what? I drink. Oh, is that a grown up uh, hobby? A lot. That's your hobby? Well, I also listen to heavy metal on full blast, but I guess I'll have to drop that one. Well, I'll give you 10 minutes per day to make your ears bleed. Thank God, I didn't need noise complaints on top of everything else. A short, awkward lull in conversation followed before I decided to break it into an obvious question. You said you're a student, right, Bree? What do you study? Oh, I'm studying to be a doctor. We can play uh, doctors. Really? A friend of mine just graduated medical school. Wait, maybe telling your dad was a bad idea. I don't want Ryan stealing away another hot roommate. Oh wow, tell him I said congrats. It's tough. But he has a girlfriend, right? Why would he do that? I mean, guys are assholes, true. Fortunately for me, Brie doesn't seem all that interested in meeting him, letting the conversation move on without another hiccup. Nobody's perfect, so... Can you tell us something bad or shameful about you? I'm 12 inches. No, nothing. I am unlucky. I have some big dab. Animals hate me. I have a small pee pee. I am prone to erectile problems. What do you want me to do? I really want to put half a small pee pee, but that's gonna ruin all the game for me, isn't it? What if I really put that? Ah, my god. Ah, I want to put that option now. Let's do it. Uh, well, I have a small pee pee actually. So do anything of note, or is corporate lackey all there is to you? Oh no! <laughs> That's a part of me now! That hit deeper than Sasha realized, but I did a good job covering up with a fake confident demeanor. I won a marathon, I'm a people person, I won a eating contest, I am pretty lucky, I was the best in my class, I don't sleep, I have a very high libido. I'm going to say that I'm pretty lucky. I won a lottery once. Because even if I have a small pee, -pee at least I'm lucky, right? Wow. You can take care of all the rent, right? Uh, no. I only got uh, 2500 from uh, that. That's not a lot of money. Oh, it uh, wasn't that much. Wow, what an accomplishment. Well, now we all know each other. Is it decided? 
Mm -hmm. Wait, I do get the choice. Both had been so pushy that I just accepted them staying here, but suddenly Bree shoot the question back at me. Well, Bree seems nice enough and Sasha is pushy and rude, but I doubt just us two would be able to handle the rent. Sure. Welcome to the place. So wait, uh, my, sp my small pee, pee doesn't get in the way? <laughs> Bree suddenly fist pumps the air again, clearly excited to be here, although it this time didn't try to hide it. <laughs> Sasha, however, does try to conceal her joy with being ex accepted. She might not like us too, but it's a nice place after all. I grin at the slight beginnings of a smile on her lips, but turn away before they can see me. Alright, a couple of things before we start. The rent and bills are paid on Mondays. On Mondays? How about at the beginning of every month? I'd say 100 bucks from each of us will cover them. Be sure to have the money ready. Or you're just gonna piss the rest of us off when we have to pay extra. 100 per week is nothing mate, that's pretty cheap. One of the bedrooms hasn't got any furniture in it, so... I'll take that one. Wait, do you have furniture now? I'm cut short by Sasha's interruption, but sure it off. It solves that problem after all. Then uh... I think that's it. Great, that means I can make you help me with my things. I don't think so, bye! Wait, I never agreed to that. Oh come on, they're all outside already. You see what I mean? So you came all prepared to move in. If you brought them all yourself, why do you need his help? Nice point. He's a guy, they're supposed to help damsels in distress. You know what, I think I'm going to back down from my offering and uh, I can just pay the rent all by myself. Whatever, I'm out. Where are you going? Where do you think? I didn't bring all my shit with me. I didn't come here assuming I'd be given the room like Bree did. Exactly, exactly my point. Bree just assumed that she would move in even without knowing that she would. What if this place was a dump? But I was right. Yeah, later. I watched Sasha stroll back out of the door and down the street. She had a point. What would Bree have done if they didn't get the room? Hey. Yes? Why are you just staring at the door? Because I don't want to go outside. Just thinking. Well, that energy would be better used coming to get my stuff. Come on. You are way too energetic for me. I'm caught by surprise as Bree grasps my wrist, dragging me towards the door before I can resist. I've not known Bree for long, but I can tell it'd be futile to complain. Begrudgedly, I drag the many, many large suitcases she stashed around the side of the house. She must have either tried not to seem too eager or knew I'd never he have helped if I knew just how much she'd to come with. By the time I'm finished, Bree is beaming at me, but everything hurts and I'm too tired to appreciate her thanks. I throw myself onto my bed with a soft thump and soon and soon drift away to thoughts of the future. Today has taken some twists and turns, but if one thinks for certain, life from now on is going to be an adventure. With friends and roommates like mine, how couldn't it be? The sound of keys rattling gets my attention. It is too early for Bree to have gone anywhere, unless she was coming home from the night before, so it means that Sasha must be here. Do you need any help uh, moving, or are you not gonna be like Bree? When I open the door, all I see is a sack of boxes with a pair of long bare legs sticking out from underneath them. <laughs> what do you mean? That's just a weird thing to say. The brown cardboard cartons are above the level of the girl's head. If either he and help her take the boxes from her, go grab more boxes outside. Uh, uh, let's go grab more boxes. Oh hey, yours is the first door on the left down the hall. I'll go out and grab another load for you, okay? A muffled mm-hmm comes from behind the boxes and I step out the side so she has plenty of room to navigate. Heading out the door, I go up to her car, a small black two-door. It has bumper stickers for a metal and goth band plastered all over the back of it. In a a pair of little black rubber bats hangs from the river view mirror where some people would hang fuzzy dice. I grab a lot of her stuff from the back seat and head back into the house, taking them into the room and setting them down. When I turn to head back out, she's standing in the hallway and I go to say hello. Hey, welcome to the house, Sasha! I'm fairly sure that's the right name, I've only met her once briefly. I stick out my hand and she gives a shake with a firm and confident grip, and I notice her nails are painted black. Actually, they're not. She smirks, which actually looks pretty on her face. And and pushes long inky hair black. I must be, since it'd be pretty funky if some other random girl just wandered in here with a stack of boxes. She responds with a touch of surprisingly appealing sass. Be awkward? Why can I only be awkward? Guess you will be, huh? I shuffle my feet a little and glance down with a small smile. Want me to go get some more of your stuff, Sasha? Together we manage to haul most of her stuff into her bedroom, where Sasha can start it from there. She says she's going to come by with a who haul later today with her furniture. I've got to go now. I'll see you when I get home. Welcome to the house, Sasha. Okay, with our new two roommates, we're gonna say I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, new adventure we're about to begin. Press the thumbs up if you like it, subscribe to not miss any of my, my future videos, support me on my Patreon to see uh, all my videos uncensored, tell me about your uh, roommate stories if you have uh, some in, your, in the comments, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm gonna read them if they're really funny. So guys, see you good, good, and of course, uh, bye.